from the cold theaters of the world. This is Circuit Breaker. Brought to you by the entertainment site AwardCircuit.com. An in-depth chat on film, television, and all the award shows that need predicting. Here's your host, Clayton Davis. Hello, readers, and welcome to Circuit Breaker. Brought to you by the entertainment website AwardCircuit.com. I'm your editor chief and owner, Clayton Davis, here today on May 3rd, 2020. Time of recording is 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is episode 185. We're brought to you by the Circuit Breaker Media Network, and here today, joined among this round table, and by round, probably square, Karen Peterson. Hello. Mark Johnson. What's going on, everyone? Joey Bagadong. <laughs> hey, hey. I love that, Joey. Joey. I just yeah. took Joey a moment Bagadong. for that. Joey Bagadongs. That's what... Uh, my uh mike phelps my friend mike phelps the guy who like does some stuff for us because i like he always like when we talk about joey because there's joseph and joey he's just a joey bag of dongs and that's the way <laughs> what, what movie good. is that from it's from um fucking is that green book no no, green green. no! <laughs> <laughs> why does that sound it sounds like hey italian mob uh, in <laughs> yes that's the only that's the only <laughs> movie of that type that's if that word had <laughs> been Listen, it was in a green book it would have improved the movie 100 <laughs> percent. Oh. he also probably would have eaten the bag of donuts yeah uh, <laughs> oh it's sopranos isn't it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i think so i think so yeah i think you might be right okay. or you might be wrong one usually, of those one of those two things is, ha- is what happened right all right, um, we got we have a show for you today. <laughs> not 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 so jam packed an agenda. Yeah, I won't say jam packed agenda, but we have a show. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, guess start with two the two big obvious things. One, uh, Word Circuit had a birthday the other day. Woohoo! Twelve. Ooh. And twelve year olds are the worst. <laughs> 12-year-olds are yeah, just they are. awful. I've they don't, one of they don't know what's going on. <laughs> they Or they, they're going through, their bodies going through changes. They don't know. Things happen to them in the middle of the night. Can't explain it. And it's really awkward for you. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Other than that, the other thing was, uh, you may have gotten to the site today. It might look just a tad different. It's a little. Yep. But that's what happens during puberty you start growing facial hair um <laughs> assuming that the site's a guy i always thought of it as a girl did you yeah eh. well we'll get her a lady ra- a lady uh what was it a lady chick or whatever um, they used to I, call don't, the, I don't think back she, in the day. i don't think she knows what she is yet i think you know not we're, non-binary yeah we're, we're just we'll gonna go let that. her this let it let the site decide <laughs> let they decide mm-hmm. yeah. let them decide what they want to be um yes. so yeah it looks a little different and there are obviously some kinks that need to be worked out but I promise it's gonna be so much fun because you can create a user profile now where you can move up the ranks in the world of cinema it's a nice ranking system that goes from the bottom to the top and it's a long road that's been built out. Enjoy it. Uh, I'm sure Mark Johnson complained about many things <laughs> that are on there because uh, there's some quizzes. Probably, probably to, there's some quizzes. There's polls. There's all that stuff. So I have a uh, our first quiz that was up on the site. So I thought we kick off to do it. Cause I know Mark hasn't read it yet. So <laughs> probably for everyone else, you guys might already know the answers to this, but uh, Mark, you haven't seen it yet. No, you- I'm, I'm actually trying to update that profile picture. Uh, <laughs> God, that like is priority. That Not him writing a goddamn right. word on the site to make sure that his picture is well represented in yeah. the Listen, most current. I look like I'm four. God, picture, okay? Jesus. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Are you ready? Yeah. Mark Johnson. And and if you guys didn't see it yet, then you could participate. Um, Question one of five. More than any other woman, I have won the most Academy Awards. Who am I? Here are your choices. Catherine Hepburn, Edith Head, Agnes Varda, Meryl Streep. Yeah, Wait for me to finish the question, asshole. You just talked about Jeopardy before <laughs> this. You know the yeah, rules. Yeah, Jeopardy's about yeah, you're being quick. Out for, uh, Jeopardy's five about being quick. Yeah. 
Listen. Uh, Edith Head Edith, is correct. Edith Head. Yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, when it loads. How many Oscars did Walt Disney, the man, win? 5, 11, 19, 22. 11. Incorrect. Damn it. I thought it was like 22. It is 22. I suck. Because women, women, women are smarter than men. Well, I just dominate the short category yeah. for like decades. Yeah, yeah, probably. I think he had yeah. 52 nominations if that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he would get two or three every year. Yeah. Which of these films did John Ford not win an Academy Award for directing? The Informer, Stagecoach, The Grapes of Wrath, The Quiet Man. Stagecoach. Incorrect. Damn it. The Informer. Wow, you're bad at this. He won for Stagecoach over Gone with the Wind, huh? Yeah. Well, it Mark was, would that, just run was, out of that was just such a crazy year because that was also yeah. the year of Wizard of Oz. And, I just yeah. thought I just thought Gone with the Wind won, like, swept. No. Which, which of these, number four, which of these films did not receive 14 Oscar nominations? Ben-Hur, Titanic, All About Eve. Hmm. Well, two of the three won 11, but All About Eve, I think, won 10. So it could be it could be any one of them. I'm going to say Ben Hur did not get four. No, it's Titanic, right? Because it didn't have the yeah, rating. I think I'll say Titanic, Titanic got third. I think Titanic. Yeah, Inc- Titanic didn't incorrect. Get the rating. It's Ben Hur. You should yeah, stay with ben it. Ben it is Ben Hur. Oh man, I thought Damn. Titanic only got four. No, four, it went eleven for fourteen, and okay. then All About Eve I think is eight for fourteen. Is yeah. it? I thought yeah. it was ten. It I, don't think, I don't think it got into double digits. Pretty sure. Okay. All right, and last question. I'm one for four, I think. Yeah, you're it's terrible. Good, you're right? terrible. At That's this. pretty good. Hey, if it was half court shots, one for four is pretty good. <laughs> if it was, a, if it was a half court <laughs> shot, or if it was just a free throw, or just free throw lines, you ass. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like Shaq. I like how he gave himself a half court <laughs> shot. All right, this one's all probably, perspective, This one's right? difficult. I'll be honest. Okay. Meryl okay. Streep won her three Academy Awards on which of her number. Nomination. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, God. All right, so here are the choices. Two, here are, okay, here are, choices, here are right. the choices: two, four, seventeen, one, three, fifteen, two, six, twenty, one, four, eighteen. Two, six, twenty. Wait, wait, wait! Can you go one more time? Two, four, seventeen, one, three, fifteen, two, six, twenty, one. Four eighteen. I'll buzz in just because I don't want Mark to get it running. I'm gonna go with two I mean, four seventeen just to stop Mark. I think it's one four eighteen. Wait, two six twenty. Right. Two, Wait, four. Joey, what's your answer? Two four and seventeen. So you, the you, first you're option? doing two four seventeen, and then what are you saying, uh, Karen? The last one 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 four eighteen. And mm-hmm. then Mark, what are you saying? Two six twenty. Two six twenty. Wow, uh, Joey, you got it. Two four seventeen. Oh, cool. Damn it. Okay. I knew two. After yeah, that, I knew two was also. Yeah, yeah. I, like I feel like it's always common knowledge that we know Kramer versus Kramer is our second nomination. It's just about when the hell, what nomination is Iron? Is choice? No, it's Iron yeah. Lady. Iron Lady is the thing that will throw you off because then you're like, yeah, yeah like Sophie's Choice. I knew would be in the single digits, mm-hmm. but if you told me three, four, five, I'd, I'd buy it. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, Iron Lady. Whether it's 12, 15, 17, 26, you know, whatever. It's and hard I to couldn't tell. remember for sure, actually, if uh, Kramer versus Kramer was number one or two. Mm. I, I knew it was either mine or Joey's. Kind Deer of. Hunter was the first one, right? What? Deer Hunter, oh, I think, yeah. was our first yeah. nomination. Deer Hunter, then yeah. Kramer. I always forget she was nominated for Deer Hunter. Yep. So those are some of the games you can play on the site. Woohoo! Nice. Uh, you can also rate movies uh, and rate movies in the way that it's supposed to be rated under a four star system. <laughs> yeah. You know how nervous I got for a hot second when I saw something about rating and I thought maybe you were making a change. I was like, who got to you? <laughs> yeah, you can rate movies on the site now. Um, they will be recorded uh, in your profile if you're signed in and rate them. Um 
and you can keep track of all your ratings. And we're obviously bulking in a lot of movies at a time, so not every movie's in there. So there's going to be a form on the site in which if there's a movie you want to rate that is not there, then you can request it. Um, and that's going to tie to a bigger thing that's coming down the line. Uh, but we want to get you guys in the mood of rating stuff. And we don't just have, um, you know, the most recent things. We try to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to diversify everything that's in there. Give everyone opportunity to rate and see stuff. There's that part. Then uh, there is, uh, there will be new predictions. And predictions are going to be officially on this side of the site. So the hub is now kind of dormant in its current state. Uh, by dormant, I mean, it's just going to, we're going to abandon it. I'm, I'm abandoning my child. I'm abandoning my boy. <laughs> um, no, you're sending him off into the world and you're going to come back to him and he's going to be great. Yeah. Listen, he was a bastard in a basket. And- yeah. Bastard, <laughs> bastard in basket. <laughs> Uh, I'm really in the there will be blood mood, uh, mood because I've been watching. Um, I, I don't know if you guys watch Middle Ditch and Schwartz on Netflix. It is literally my single favorite thing right now that's in existence. So you guys should watch it. My favorite thing in existence right now is what we do in the shadows. And I mm. love what's happening with Guillermo this season. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Oscar predictions are. So they are so far right now the best picture prediction predictions are there and I swear to god I, like I almost didn't even <laughs> want to make them because I was just like <laughs> the hell am I doing here like like these aren't going to come out <laughs> or they are and they're not You put the invisible man in there right Um <laughs> Is the Invisible Man listen? Is well, no, not you know, because this isn't completed yet, so no, it's not. <laughs> but it will be. It'll be in the top forty. I'm sure it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. The Invisible Man. It, you can I, rate it though. It's on, cute that you think there's forty. I mean, there are <laughs> until. You know what I hate about the uh, we got to fix about the 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 rating database. Uh, so if you go to m- movies and go to list, you can find every movie that we have uh, in the database. The thes are under T. I can't, like, I'm oh. trying to get them out from under that. It's the worst. <laughs> Pretty annoying. Yeah. So I'm going to go rate The Invisible Man right now, live with you on the podcast, because uh, I didn't rate it at the time because I didn't do the review. Uh, I give it three stars. Yeah, that's about what I would do. Yeah. I gave it three and a half. I'm trying to remember, though, if I wrote that review or if Braverman did. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think Braverman wrote it. What's also going to be cool about this when you go to the invisible, uh, when you go to the movie page, uh, then you'll see all the stats about the movie, you know, genre, which you can add to like uh, your profile as a, as a follow, uh, release date, which then you can also find out what other movies opened up on that date that are in our database. Uh, then obviously all the stats like director and stars, but they will be eventually later this week bring you to the actor or director page in which like their whole filmography will be listed and then you can actually rate the person themselves so we get to actually give stars to people now because that's what we're at we're being straight up boys the way that karen says we are and then eventually you're going to be able to rate rank them all which is also going to be a little cool thing to do and then uh, also We're going to be able to bring you box office numbers because box office mojo, you know, some people never, never heard of it. (laughs) Um, So you'll find out some budgets and revenues as as they are uh, updated. So Invisible Man had a nine million dollar budget and made one hundred and twenty three million dollars. I think that might be global. That's Blumhouse. Oh, is that global? That's got to be global, right? Because I don't think it made that in the U.S., did it? Wait, what was I the box office did. total? One twenty three. No, I think that is U.S. Is it? Yeah, I think uh-huh. so. I'll double check, but yeah, I think so. Interesting. You'll also see the tagline because I thought that was important for people to know what the tagline was and how it's being marketed. What was the number you said? One twenty three. No, that's worldwide. One twenty two nine. Is it really? Yeah, it only made sixty five basically domestic. Oh but wait, it yeah, it wasn't. In it theaters also long came out in February and would have still been in theaters. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 
Hmm. Remember theaters? I was thinking it came out at the beginning of February. It came out at the end. Hmm. So this is an interesting question to ask all of you. What movies are you looking forward to this year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that are still coming out? <laughs> that you think are still coming out? I would have said Spiral until yesterday when they delayed that by a year. Mark? I don't even I don't even know at this point. I don't know what's coming out anymore. I'm at a loss. I'll say the King of Staten Island just because it's actually coming out. The the ones I'm most excited for, everyone knows I'm most excited for, Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four and Top Gun Maverick. Shocker. <laughs> I know, it's not surprising. But I'm also really looking forward to and I hope it does still come out. Um Oh, maybe it did get pushed. I don't remember. Last night in Soho, the new Edgar Wright movie. I, I don't think it officially got pushed yet, but it will get. But no, it will get pushed. Mm-hmm. Do we know if the Wes Anderson movie is still coming out? Yes, yeah, it's still out. It's still coming yeah, out. It's dated then, for November. And that's that's one of the top ones for me. Promising Young Woman when it comes out. Oh my I gosh, it's so sure. good. Wait, did, did yeah. that not? Uh, oh, did, it was no, supposed to come I, out in April, and then it got. It was the second screening that got canceled for me, right after Quiet Place. Yeah, it was um, the last promising young woman was the last screening in L.A. Like for a lot of people before they canceled everything. Uh, Mark, I'm on the French Dispatch movie page on awardcircuit.com. Are you? Yes, All and right. uh, it com- it's right now dated according to this, assuming it's correct, October fifteenth, twenty twenty. Does that sound right? It sounds right. Yeah. Yep, because it got moved to that magical October fifteenth date where a lot of Best Picture nominees. Yeah, Get it, I also have a runtime already that that generated for it. It's going to be 108 minutes. Oh, perfect! Yeah, that sounds about right for what I, I love that. I love that running time. Its genre is listed as a comedy romance drama. It's in the language of English, and uh, have you ever heard Alex Trebek say Jean? I hate it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. Have you have you seen him watch the video that someone put together of all the times that he has said uh, that? Uh, no. It's hilarious. <laughs> that is that sounds funny. Um I uh yeah. there was an episode a couple weeks ago where it was one of the college runs and one of the players was in did curling as like a hobby. So he was excited because he's Canadian and all that. And then the answer to one of the questions was curling, and that guy did not even buzz in. And he got visibly upset at the guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was like, curling. Like, I've never seen him get expressive at someone, like specifically Alex to Trebek one person. Beck has had like so much attitude this last year. Because he gives it's zero he, he gives zero fucks. He's anymore. like, you're wasting my zero. time and I'm yeah. dying. Stop this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could be at home. It's pretty funny to watch him get mad. Like, what was it a couple weeks ago during the interview part? Someone said something and he just made fun of them. Oh, nerds. It, that was what he said back. Like, it was some some hobby that they had. And he's just like, oh, so you're a loser. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, that's great. Good stuff. Oh, Alex Trebek saying, come Alex at me, Trebek. bro. I love it. <laughs> oh, um, oh, question from Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Uh, I'm a guy, so I agree that ranking things are fun. <laughs> um, I mean, thanks, Dylan. Um, I ranked that question highly. That whole that whole <laughs> podcast was a lot of fun, so thank you all very much. I especially like the run of 2000s list and the question about removals and ad, ads for 2004. He's referring to choose uh, or uh, what the hell's the name of the game. I'm having a brain fart. Uh, choose the deletion. Take an Oscar, give an Oscar, whatever. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And even though I know I know no one cares about what I think below is how I felt. He then he gave us an example of 2004. Um, so he would like to us to do other 2000s if we could. Uh, so another one in that decade. So I thought we could run to Mark's favorite year of 2007. Ooh. 2007, because. <laughs> We have such, we have a big, uh, what's it called, disagreement on if it's really the best year of cinema. Mm-hmm. I say the best year of cinema is 1985, but that's just me. I mean, I'm not saying that's the best year. I just think it's the best year uh, in the last 20. <laughs> I, mean, I can go with, the, eh, because I might say 99, so yeah. All right. 
So nine was more than twenty years ago, John. I know that's why I said I guess. <laughs> I guess he might be right. <laughs> um. All right, we're going to two thousand seven, and let's start with the best actor lineup that included Daniel Day Lewis for There Will Be Blood. George Clooney for Michael Clayton, Johnny Depp for Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, Tommy Lee Jones in the Valley of Elah, and Viggo Mortensen for Eastern Promises. Immediately, immediately, <laughs> we are deleting Tommy Johnny. Lee Jones in the Valley of Elah, and I will yes. add in Brad Pitt, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Oh, can we... We can only do one, right? Yeah, you can only delete one. Because if that was the case, I'd delete four. <laughs> but oh, yeah. No. yeah, I'd be deleting four of them. But uh, mm-hmm. we can only delete one. So that, that for the sake of the game, it's that. I'll delete Johnny Depp just to mix it up. And I'll put in Emil Hirsch for Into the Wild. So wait, do you mean that? Or do, do you just, are you, are you on the Joey kick where you don't like giving the same answer? 50 50 like i what? i would i would get rid this of is, everyone this, okay. i would also get rid I of i just everyone. want to point something out Except Joey. You, this is becoming this has now become for you the favorite versus best argument for mark <laughs> like <laughs> this is where it is now we it's all just, have it's same just preposterous you can have the same answer as other people. Yeah. But, well, I actually I have the same answer in that I would get rid of everyone except Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. yeah. But but the worst one, one in that lineup you think is Johnny Depp. Yes. The worst. I I mean he's not a good singer and I'm I don't like that movie, so there's two yeah. strikes right there. And Tommy Lee Jones in the Valley of Ela is He's fine in a movie that's meh. Okay. Okay. Good, uh Joey or I mean not Joey. Karen or Mark. I will agree with you. Vigo's got to go. You get rid of Vigo. I mean, yeah, I'm getting. Sorry, yeah, yeah I'm getting. You're not agree with anyone. You're just taking that on your own. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Sorry. Um, well, I'm agreeing they should all go away, but except for DDL. But yeah, Vigo's the one I'm taking out, and I am replacing him with Jake Gyllenhaal for Zodiac. You're going to delete the only full frontal that we have in that lineup. Look at that. <laughs> 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 I just watched Eastern. I Promise. mean, Emil okay. Hirsch, maybe. Also, yeah. What'd you say, uh, uh, Mark? I just watched Eastern Promises last week. I I didn't like the movie as much as I did the first time around, but I do. But I do like him a lot. Ro- Robert Robert Hamer man said that. it best. It's Vigo. Yeah. Vigo convinced us. It was good. Yeah, I think he. Well, I not, think he's great. Yeah. I'd remove. Um, I'd probably get rid of Tommy Lee Jones as well, but I would add. God, I hope this is the same year because foreign films always screw me up on this, but. I would add Matthew Almaric. Almaric. For Diving Bell and the Butterfly? Yeah, okay, for Diving yes, Bell. That yeah. is the same year. Okay. Good. I was so hoping good. I was waiting for it <laughs> <laughs> to be wrong, too. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean. I do wish I could add four, though. I mean, yeah, for the sake of argument, are people. we all deleting four? Or are you guys keep? Are you guys keeping more than no, Daniel I'm, Day-Lewis? I'm deleting four. I'd be fine deleting five. You, oh, oh, I would be fine with that here. also. What'd you what say, uh, f- Mark? I thought you would delete three and keep two. I keep three. Oh, you keep, keep three. three. So you keep in. Yeah, keep, you definitely keep in Clooney. Yeah, and you keep in Day Lewis, and then I guess you're gonna keep. I'm gonna keep Figo. Figo? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could add Gosling. I could add Emil Hirsch. I could add Casey Affleck. Philip Seymour Hoff. Philip Seymour Hoffman. James McAvoy. All need to be there, but. I would add Tom Hanks over some of the people in that lineup. It's a great year. Uh, here we go. Best actress. This is why I will always agree that 2007 is not a great year because of this like lineup. Yeah. Uh, Marion Cotillard, Lavian Rose, Kate Blanchett, Elizabeth the Golden Age, Ellen Page Juno, Julie Christie away from her, Laura Linney, the Savages. I will delete Miss Blanchett for Elizabeth the Golden Age. I will insert um, safe answer probably is Kira Knightley for atonement, but I'm gonna go Marquetta Glova for once. Come back to me because I want to see if I can find someone else. Yeah, I'm trying to think who I would add. I know who I would take out. Who are you deleting? Julie Christie because I fucking hate Away from oh, Her. Oh God! <laughs> you hate There Will Be Blood. You hate Away from Her. You hate I do. movies. <laughs> well, 
the reasons that I dislike those movies are very different. Um, there will be blood. I I do acknowledge is a well made movie. You hate milkshakes. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got it. I've always hated milkshakes. <laughs> I just I don't like movies where there's nobody that I want to care about, and that's why I hate There Will Be Blood. Away from her, if you've ever lived with anybody that has Alzheimer's, you know that that movie is so so much bullshit. Um, I'll get rid of Kate Blanchett also, and I'll go Amy Adams Enchanted. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good answer. I was actually down to Amy Adams and Enchanted or Nikki Blonsky for Hairspray. Oh, that was my two as well. <laughs> that was my two as well. Yeah, this this is a category that you can make a lot of changes in. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of really good ones. Yeah, this is. I actually keep again probably just one. In Marianne, um, no, I keep Ellen Page. Yeah. Ellen Page is the only one I yeah. would be really dedicated to keeping, but I could keep the uh, everyone. I, Blanchett would have to go, and then it would depend on the argument who else I could find. I also cannot, for the life of me, remember many parts of the Savages. Like it's such a, yeah, it's such it's a, okay. it's such a blip on like my filmography life. I remember not caring for it nearly as much as everyone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw it. I don't remember it. Yeah, like I just I remember writing of predicting Philip Bosco for some reason a lot that year, and that's it. Like it's all I remember from that movie. Karen, did you say who you would replace? I, I might have missed that while I was looking. I was yeah, I was between um, Nikki Blonsky for Hairspray and um, Amy Adams. Amy Adams for Enchanted. Thank you. So who are you getting rid of, Mark? I'd get rid of Blanchett, and I would. And there's like three that I would want to add, but I think I think I'm going to go with Halle Berry for Things We Lost in the Fire. I think Ooh. I think I'm, I'm like one of the. I think I'm. Do you guys like too. that movie? No, I like that movie. Okay, good. Yeah, I, it's fine. I, yeah, I remember. It's yeah, good. I remember I like being, people being so lukewarm on it, but I liked it a lot, and I think she was really great. Yeah, yeah. she also. Um, not she also. Um, that's a very unmarked answer. I'm very very proud of you, Mark. It's kind of like you became woke. Yeah, it was, and actually, you want to hear you want to hear how woke it was between Ali Berry and We Tang for Lost Caution. Which I was waiting to see Lost Caution. Yeah. Lost Caution. Yeah, that's actually probably the correct answer. Yeah, <laughs> if I, I had to go like deep cut, I might have gone Santa Miller interview. Yeah, I mean, there's you know you know what another sleeper another good one that year would be would be um, I can't remember her name all of a sudden, but uh, from Waitress. Uh, Carrie Russell. Yeah, yeah. Carrie Russell. Oh. I thought that was a cute movie. I liked her performance a lot. Uh, the musical's better than the movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I saw the musical on Broadway. Uh, oh, cool. I think, I think it might be the last musical I saw on Broadway before like everything happened, which is weird. Oh. You, also, um, you, also have, you also have Angelina Jolie from Jolie, Mighty Heart. I was about year. to say that. because I, I made my choice, and I was happy with not, not including that. This the, I, so it's I like performing Jolene Mighty Heart. It gets so crapped on now, and I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, it was a good performance at the time. I know. I, I thought she's so. I think she's better in that than she was in Changing, which she actually got an Oscar oh, nomination yeah. for. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I thought Changing sucked. All right, supporting actor. Uh, I got Javier Bardem, No Country for Old Men, who won the Oscar. Uh, Casey Affleck, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. Hal Holbrook, Into the Wild. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Charlie Wilson's War, and Tom Wilkinson, Michael Clayton. Oh, there's only one choice here. <laughs> I mean, I Come think on. there's one choice here too, but I know yeah, he's on. gonna do it. So let me do it. No, do the right. Goodbye. Thing. Goodbye. That's a good good goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> you know, the place. Uh goodbye. Unfortunately, even though I love you very much and you deserve every Oscar nomination, and I already gave you an insertion into lead actor, but goodbye, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, no. More. Oh. Yes. No. Absolutely. He's my number two in the and, category. And, and, and insert Ethan Hawke before the devil knows you're dead. Your co-star from before the devil knows you're dead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Tom Wilkinson. Oh. Man. Yeah, that's my five. <laughs> I, I don't like Michael Clayton. Well, I, knew, I knew you weren't going to get rid of the either. one that I... Thank you, Joey. I don't yeah. either. And I... I will... J.K. Simmons Juno. Mm. I like that speech at the end a lot. Karen, you want to you wanna go? Um, or do, I can go if you're still looking. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, well, my, I'm between a few. Mine's probably pretty obvious. 
um, Hal Holbrook for me has to go. Is it because you went to high school with him or something? <laughs> there was some sort of beef you had. It is such a nothing performance. And if I remember, Stop again, it. again, listen, it's, listen, Stop. I love, I love that movie, and I love Hal Holbrook. But my memory of it, and again, I, I, I'm looking forward to watching that one again. And my memory is he's barely in it, and it was kind of shocking to me that he. Oh. You mean nominated. it was a supporting performance? I mean, it was like a cameo yeah. performance is how I He's remember the it. the crux literally of the transition the scene, into the third act. Literally the scene in which he asks if he can adopt him is heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's it out, is like, it is like the me. scene of the movie, <laughs> I'd argue. I'm, I'm going to take him out, and my replacement's pretty obvious. I'm going to go, for me at least, I'm going to go Paul Dano for There Will Be Blood. I thought he was oh. incredible in that movie. That's good. I like your replacement. I just, I hate your yeah. pick. <laughs> I, know. Um, I had to go look real quick because I wasn't sure if Hal Holbrook was still alive, and he is. He is. Yeah. Yeah. He was just yeah. in something, I think, that I watched on TV, maybe. Hawaii oh. Five-0. Um, it was something <laughs> was you would he totally really? watch. Wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he had a movie he starred in a couple of years ago that was the last thing I think he was in, but I'll check for Mark. Yeah. He was also on an episode of Grey's Anatomy, and he was also a voice in Planes, Fire, and Rescue. <laughs> Yeah, he hasn't been in anything since 2015. And the last movie I can think of was he was in Promised Land. Was he, on a, was he on a TV show? Oh, he's, in Link, he's also in Lincoln. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is because I watched Lincoln recently. Just because you watch a movie recently doesn't mean it came out recently. <laughs> that's a good yeah. point. Very, very good point. Mark, you have less cognitive function than Hal Holbrook and he's 117. <laughs> that's probably true. So... I will also take out Tom Wilkinson. And as much as I would love to replace him with Tom Cruise for Lions for Lambs, I feel I like you're going to do it. No, I want to. But I really think that my personal winner that year was uh, Mark Ruffalo for Zodiac. Oh, my God. So good. Please. Tom Cruise and Lions for Lambs. And that sort of movie itself is one I really wish they could get a do over on. That should be like a slam dunk Oscar performance. Yeah. yeah. He's so good in it. But if I'm being really honest with myself, Mark Ruffalo and Zodiac just, oh, he kills me. Love him. Yeah. What, that, he, that's, that performance is why he needs to eventually play John Edwards when they make the, the movie about him. Like smarmy politician with a smile dead inside. Like it's perfect. <laughs> also, Mark, Hal Holbrook's 95, so I didn't lie that much. <laughs> I'm He's at- from Cleveland. I'm mad that uh, no one said Ben Foster for 310 to Yuma. I just watched that the other day, too. God's so good. So good. In He's that. great in that. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what else would be kind of a off the, you know, off collar pick would be I just watched Superbad last night. <laughs> and both Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah are hilarious in that. I mean, everybody yeah, you, in that's hilarious. And neither of them are a supporting performance. No. Right, 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 right. Right. So maybe like Bill Hader yeah. or somebody. The, Can they the also- cops. I also want to bring bring something to light here, and and this 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 isn't like to start an argument or anything, but I, I actually see the argument in it. A lot of people call bullshit on Casey Affleck and supporting for what for assassination of Jesse James. Mm-hmm. So so again, not to keep saying this, but I just watched that like three nights ago. Um, <laughs> what have you been doing? God, it, well, so I'm re, so I'm where re- are you? Ch- where do you are you your children? <laughs> yeah. I'm re yeah. so I'm rewatching the, the decade of the 2000s yeah. to kind of reform my top 100 list of that decade now that there's been some time and uh so yeah, assassination just James, I just watched and yeah, I, I I don't know how he could be supporting. I would say that performance though is so incredible. You got to get him in whether it's lead or supporting. He's yeah. that opening scene when he first runs into Frank uh, James and he's just like playing coy and uh, yeah. it's just awesome. It's incredible. Yeah, and a, 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 for a long time, I was like, because for me, Brad Pitt is the performance. It's like the second best performance of the decade. Like behind Daniel Day Lewis, they just have always just landed into the category of an historic uh, thing there. But Brad Pitt, I always would, I argued for a long time that it was m- much like the Anthony Hopkins Sounds of the Lambs thing that he's almost supporting. I mean, he probably is supporting, but he's so memorable to me that like it's like he's there the entire time even when he isn't because he's in not a lot of the movie uh, they're both and, they're both pretty present throughout casey like, I don't, I, is I present all yeah, throughout from, and then i and, and then i argued that like oh it's almost like he takes a back seat but now that i've grown up 
<laughs> I think I'm looking now and I'm like, I think I just really don't want to throw anyone out of my lead lineup. I'm being honest with myself and I'm just like not doing the right yeah. thing. But I think yeah. he it's, is. It's probably a co-lead. It's really, totally but, a co-lead. Yeah. But if you had to say one was lead, I I would tell you I'd, I'd go with Affleck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Casey's like the. Definitively, you can argue yeah. that Brad Pitt that movie, is supporting. That movie goes on for like twenty minutes or so after Jesse's gone. And, you know, yeah, it follows it follows yeah. what happens next for Robert for a while, which I yeah. didn't remember uh, happening, but that was interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh, all right, supporting actress: uh, Tilda Swinton, Michael Clayton, Amy Ryan, Gone Baby Gone, Kate Blanchett. I'm not there. Ruby D, American Gangster, and Saoirse Ronan, Atonement. I think this is the hardest category to pull someone out of. I think this is the closest to really because I did, yeah. really because I honestly delete four. Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I honestly delete yeah. four. No, yeah, I mean, I think, but, okay, I think but, I, okay, but which one is? I guess what I meant. Oh, like, which, okay, what's the which, hardest one? Oh, to pull out? I, th- I, for me, I am. I, this is not a popular answer at all. Um, I am removing Sarah Ronan. Oh, you mm. suck. <laughs> and, I, and, and I'm inserting her uh, co-star Vanessa Redgrave. Yeah, oh, that's a good choice too, though. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, they should have both been nominated. I would only keep Amy Ryan and Kate Blanchett. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, Tilda. Um, well, this is going to go back to me not liking Michael Clayton. Oh, right, right, right. I also don't get the Ruby D nomination, so I'm deleting her. Yeah, oh, and it yeah. sucks. But I just, I, I never got that. Oh, um, I get it. I just, it just <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I no, I got why she got nominated. I, just, I remember watching that and going, "Well, she's not getting nominated," and then she did, and I was like, "All right." Um, and I will put in Jennifer Garner for Juno. That's great. You love Juno. I love Juno, and that's a legitimate snub. I was yeah. actually going to say the same. She's, yeah, she's Jennifer fantastic Garner. in that. Mm-hmm. It's her only Oscar-worthy performance in her career. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Go ahead, Karen. If you're no, ready, that's, I have the same. I, well, I would get rid of Tilda Swinton, and I would replace oh. her with <laughs> yeah Jennifer Garner. <laughs> Damn you. I love Tilda. That's one of my favorite performances, I think, of the decade. I think but. that that's probably hers is the best performance in that film, but I really don't like that film. Oh, now I'm looking forward to seeing that one again. I might watch that I, I'll revisit it I one should, day, yeah. but I just remember watching it going, none of this is working for me. Yep. Did you guys like The American? No, I, I did hate, like The American. I, I hate The American. Oh, my God. I hate The American. I what? One of my favorite memories is going to see uh, The American. It was like a God. Friday mo- afternoon, Friday morning thing. There's like five people in the theater with me, and the other four are like two old couples, and they bounced like 15 minutes in. Oh, my God. Like, as soon as, like, there was, whenever one of the sex scenes happened, they were like, nope, not what we thought it was. <laughs> And it was just me watching it. I was like, I kind of like this movie. Yeah, I like Michael Clayton more than than The American for sure. Because Michael Clayton, I think, is just like kind of cold and just like kind of flatline like throughout. But like I've I've rewatched it like maybe like, within the last two years. I think Sam Coffee made me. I remember do it. when you rewatched <laughs> it. And I was gonna yeah. rewatch it too because what you said, but I didn't. Because because people really want me. Because people like this is a thing. Internet, film, Twitter. You bully me into not thinking that Tilda Swinton's win was totally cool, and it's. I still she feel like great. it's not. Oh, uh, yeah. She I, listen, and, and that lineup. I feel like she has Amy Ryan's Oscar. No, stop it. Yeah, I, have an, I think I have an irrational love for the American and really all things George Clooney. I actually, and God, I have said this phrase twenty times today already, but I watched Up in the Air the other night. Mm-hmm. Love what it. what of the three of those Michael Clayton up in the air and the American which do you think is his best performance of those three up, up in, in the, the air, air by miles not even close <laughs> yeah by miles up in the air but but the American will be second oh, Karen what no. do you think um what do I think between which ones up in the, the air oh up in the air for sure yeah and you're gonna and, and you're gonna say the American I don't know. I need to see Michael Clayton again because I, mm. I would say Michael Clayton. You know, you know what my secret number two to include in this lineup is? And this is just to get Mark, <laughs> you know, feeling good about me again. Hands uh, hands down, yeah. 
I'll never understand how Kelly McDonald did not translate. Yeah. Like, never yeah. will understand so, it. Like, yeah, she should have been in there. It was a so, strange mess. That's Oh. That is uh, that is my choice. Since I didn't oh, I thought you were going to move. I'm no, sorry, you're just blabbering no, okay, on over there you, about us no, not liking yeah. Michael Clayton. <laughs> I know George George yeah. Clooney. And whatnot. No, that was that was that's exactly who I have up on my list right now. Was remove Ruby D, even though she was good. It's just I wouldn't put her. I, I couldn't take out Blanchett. And I think Blanchett would be my four there. Um, but I'd put Kelly McDonald in as the as the. She probably would have been my two or three that year. Yeah, I think she is my Loved her. two. Yeah. Especially at the end. And shout out to Catherine Keener, too. Yeah. Into the I thought wild. about her. For where the wild things are? Into the wild. Into the yeah. wild. Oh, into the wild. Okay. I was like, what, what came out that year? Yeah. Okay. I forgot she was in there. Yeah, she was. She was. She fell off at the end. Ruby yeah, took got, her spot got, and well, Jennifer. Into the wild fell off in the end completely. Yeah, I know. Huh. And then Emil her should have stayed in the wild. That. Are you bringing it full circle? <laughs> um, Want to do one more year? Yeah. All right. Let's go to 2003. I think it's a good year to do because it's that, I think, maybe the best year of the decade, of that decade. That's the Chicago year. So let's start with the ladies in supporting actress first. So we have Catherine Zeta Jones for Chicago. Julianne Moore for The Hours, Kathy Bates for About Schmidt, Meryl Streep for Adaptation, and Queen Latifah for Chicago. Wait, I'm sorry. I did not. I, I just did the wrong year. Wait, no, it's the right year. Wait, what the hell? Did I just no, that would myself? be the movies released in 2002. Oh, it? I'm on the wrong. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's fucking yeah. IMDb. Uh, That's he why. He did it. He did it. <laughs> no, no, it's IMDb's fault because I clicked on the right year that it should be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it. So are we went, doing 2002 or 2003? no? We're doing 2003, like I wanted. I just read okay. it. I read it. 2003. Uh, okay. The Lord of the Rings. The yes, the Lord of the Rings year. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. Yes, and I did mean what I said. So I was just looking <laughs> okay. at two different things here because IMDb needs to label their shit correctly. All right, so supporting actress now: Renee Zellweger, Cold Mountain; Holly Hunter, Thirteen; Marsha Gay Harden, Mystic River. Patricia Clarkson, Pieces of April, and Shore Agdash Lu for House of Sand and Fog. I will release Patricia Clarkson from this lineup and I will take in the first voice performance, Ellen DeGeneres Finding Nemo. And I mean it. Does everyone hear me though? Am I, am I okay? Sound wise? I'm not sure if he knows we can't hear him. I don't think he knows hello, we can't hear him. Because <laughs> he's been gone a long time. Well, while we wait, yeah. do I do I really go all in on Lost in Translation and go Anna Faris? I don't know that I can do yeah, that. Can. That's yeah, a lot. Come on. Be, be rational now. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not going to see the movie you like once. <laughs> I know that. No worries there. I don't think you'll hear me say it more than once either. You know what I got to do with these things a lot of times? The quick like look is you gotta like dive into like the Golden Globes and the Spirit Awards just to see like who mm-hmm. didn't get an Oscar nomination. I just yeah. I just look back at my spreadsheet of movies that year and see which one had a performance I really liked. I'm not as anal as you. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Few few people are. I've thought about doing it, but I just don't want to do the work. Like yeah. to like you, make one. Like yeah. I'm going oh, yeah. forward, I could easily do it. Yeah, that's for you especially, because I see maybe like Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. We hear you. Hey. I heard you guys the whole time. It was so <laughs> frustrating. It was so frustrating. <laughs> yep, I've been there. <laughs> oh, dude, Jesus. I heard you the whole time. I was like, what the f-, f? My God. It's so annoying, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's the worst. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Did you guys even hear my answer? No, no you, like, right after you deleted We it. heard you say you'd take out Patricia Clarkson. Uh, and then you said Jesus. nothing. Okay. <laughs> so I'm deleting Patricia Clarkson. Okay, we got hello. That yes, yes, okay, okay. We're re- we've never <laughs> yeah. been more ready. Okay. Of April, and I am inserting a voice performance of Ellen DeGeneres in Finding Nemo. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I am deleting Renee Zellweger, and I am putting in Maria Bello. 
Yeah, that was my, I was between her and one other. That's a good pick. Um, I'm only passionate about Holly Hunter in this game. Yeah, that's the thing. I could delete all of them. Um, oh, I, oh, no. Sure. Oh, oh, no. Sure yeah, I'm passionate about three of them. Yeah, Shorey, Marsha. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. Shorey. I wouldn't take and that. Marcia. And Marsha. And Marsha's great, too. She should have won. She should have won. Um, which which one? Which one should have won? Sure, yeah, she she, she, is. Oh, she okay. should have won. I remember when they did that survey for to pass Academy members. She was the only person that uh, had the Academy change their mind in retrospect. They like they like revoted like a bunch of performances, and and yeah, like I think ni- I think like ninety five percent of them stayed like the winners stayed the same except for her category. They give it to her over Renee. I wish they would do that more often then yeah. that survey. I, I, okay, yeah, I am going to take out Erna, um, and I'm going to replace her with Parker Posey for our Mighty Wind. Oh, nice. Mm. Good, good pick. I also like Renee Zellweger, like, that's also, like, the King's Speech kind of thing right now that everyone, like, like, listen, she shouldn't have won, but I like the performance. It's not, like, as bad as everyone says it is, but I, I just, it's the one of that five that I... And the least passionate. I mean, it about. is cook. It is cookie cutter Oscar. Like we knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we knew it was going to be it for. Her. That's what it was. All right, uh, Mark. So I get rid of Clarkson, and I'm since uh, Bella was taken. I'm between Jessica Lang and Helena Bonham Carter for Big Fish. Which one do you guys like more of the, than that? Of those two, Jessica yeah. Lang probably. Yeah. yeah, that's where I was leaning. Yeah. No one jumped on Laura Linney. I was going to do Laura Linney. Laura Linney too, yeah, you should have yeah, done Laura I love Linney. Mystic oh, yeah. Bird is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, man. See? Supporting performance. One scene. Hit it out of the park. Yeah. Get an Oscar nomination from Clayton. That's the way you do it. <laughs> there it is. Supporting actor. You got uh, Tim Robbins, Mystic River, Alec Baldwin, The Cooler, Benicio Del Toro, 21 Graham, Jaiman Unsu in America, Ken Watanabe, The Last Samurai. I am so excited to share my answer. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm the, del- this actually is not a bad lineup, but the five for me is Alec Baldwin, the cooler. Ooh. He's the five of the lineup and I am inserting the shit at a Sean Astin, Lord of the Rings, yes, Return of the King. that's my answer too. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And I go, f- I, l- he's my personal winner that year. He should have won. Hands down. I think totally he should have won. Totally agree. Completely. Like could not believe it didn't mm-hmm. happen. Like, could not believe it. That's how passionate I am about it. Like, I'm like, it's one of those things like, what? Yeah. Totally. I am am deleting Benicio Del Toro. (laughs) Don't like 21 21 grams. And uh, I am between Albert Finney for Big Fish and Peter Sarsgaard for Shattered Glass. So I'll go go Finney just because I like Big Fish better. But those are the two for me. Clear cut, too. I'll get rid of uh, Watanabe, or however you say. Ooh, it. Really? Yeah, I just think I just think I don't know. It was between him and Jujuman. I can't say their names. Jaiman Unsu. <laughs> did you say what did you call him? Jujuman. <laughs> I can never. I can never remember. Jaiman Unsu. Jaiman. Jaiman Unsu. So as Mark pronounces, pronounces him, Pokemon Hutsu. Monster. <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, the, D, the D is, yeah, the D is Mr., but you know how to say Mr. Tammy Bobbins there for Mr. Griffin. <laughs> Jesus. All right, listen. Go ahead. I'm going to replace the dude from The Last Samurai. Yep. And I'm going to put in Robert Duvall from Open Range. Ew. My I God. It's, 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 it's the most answer that ever Open, Oh, my you God. Know, open you Range. Know I is love Westerns. Gross. I think that's, a, I think that's an so underrated boring. Western. Oh. So you take out a really great performance for a really okay performance <laughs> in a bad movie. Okay, I see. Hey, yeah. Robert Duvall never it's gave the, it's less the mar- than it's the market. It's the market. That's why. That's no, no. why we n- marked. He definitely did, and we nominated him. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, probably the judge. Probably yeah. yeah. That, that's I why we're good at that. reading the Academy because Mark Johnson provides us insight into what stupid yeah. things they do <laughs> on a daily that's basis. True, right there. Yeah, there go, go. go ahead, Karen. No, I was with you one hundred percent. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, with the deletion and everything? Yes. Oh, let see. Nice. We're totally yeah. on the same yeah. page on this one. Yeah. Number number two insertion, by the way, is Peter Sarsgaard. Like, at, at that point, I'm probably removing 
that I'll probably then re- remove Jaiman. See, I think if I were going to take out a second one, it'd probably be Benicio. See, I think in that lineup, he's the best of the lineup. Oh, I really think Tim Robbins is great. Yeah, I think he's good, too. I think he's really good. I just, you know, there are people who, like, really don't like that. that, uh, Another performance that didn't age well out of that year. People crap on him a lot. Also, people think he's lead, and I don't buy that. I don't think. No, he's not. I mean, well, he's a, he he's actually a big supporting player, but yeah, he actually could be. Because it's hard to like say that he's supporting and that it's just Sean Penn's movie. It's. I remember reading the book, and I don't remember which one, but one of them has a bigger role than the other. Like clearly, I just don't remember if it's Robbins or not. Yeah, but the movie did play more evenly yeah where where they do kind of if they had swapped i i wouldn't have been like super shocked like is like could would you argue then it's a three lead movie mm, no no I, I, I don't think the third leg is there clayton logic shows you that it's, it's three leads mm. see to me it's a movie about a guy whose daughter is missing like if I'm gonna say it in one sentence, that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lead actress: Charlize Theron, Monster. Diane Keaton, Something's Got to Give. Keisha Castle Hughes, Whale Rider. Uh, Naomi Watts, Twenty One Grams. Samantha Moore in, in America. What a lineup that turned out to be. Um, I am going to say a bye bye to. I mean, I I love the nomination because I because it's I love when it's for movies that no one's even probably heard of before the nomination happened. But you got to get rid of Keisha Gassel Hughes, I think, of that lineup. And I will put in Scarlett Johansson, where she should have been campaigned. And I don't even really love Lost in Translation, but I, she is great in it. Uh, I'm deleting Naomi Watts. Since don't like 21 grams. And yes, the answer is Scarlett Johansson, though I will make a citation of no one else is going to save this performance. And I, it's my second favorite performance of the year after hers. Uh, Zoe Deschanel, All the Real Girls. That movie is phenomenal. Nobody saw it. Mm, that does not. It's so good. Mark? I'm going to... I know what you're about to do, and I'm going to punch you when you do it. Go ahead. I'm going. I'm going to remove Diane Kiotan. <laughs> actually, I didn't, that, actually, I didn't think you were going to do that. that. How you say, yeah. that's actually you went against that how the grain. Dion, yeah, yeah. Dion, Dion, Dion Kiotan. Yep. Dion yeah. Kiotan. Dion Kiotan. It's Michael. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm and I'm going to put in Uma Thurman for Kill Bill. Mm. Wow. What a what a film. That's another good one. What a message board answer for you to give. Yeah. I love that movie. I love the first one. Though I would never delete Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton's my number two that year of that category. What was? Of that lineup. She was saying Diane Keaton. Diane, was? He was saying Diane Keaton. Yeah, like but I thought, I thought, you, look, you look like yeah. a something's got to give kind of fanish man. Who, me? Yeah, you. Yeah, no, I didn't like it. It felt too much Ooh. as good as it gets. Yeah. It's, all, it's also, hand, uh, side note, really fantastic Keanu Reeves performance in that yeah, movie. Yeah, fine. Really, really great in that movie. Uh, Karen? I will take out Naomi Watts. Sorry. And I agree with you, though, Clayton. I am replacing her with um, Scarlett Johansson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would also, th- in this lineup, by the way, I think I only keep two. I keep Theron and, and Watts. I keep Theron and Keaton. Uh, yeah. So yeah, my my that. other two would be Evan Rachel Wood for thirteen, and I this is one of, this this I believe is one of the big underrated performances of the two thousands period. Jennifer Connelly in House of Sand and Fog. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I think she yeah. obliterates that movie. I think that's I actually even think that's her best performance like of her career. I do think the clear cut the clear cut three for me are are Johansson, Deschanel, and and Evan Rachel Wood. So I think I could only keep two. And even if I I do like the Uma Thurman pick, 
and Jennifer Connelly's good, like I may have to not hold on to Diane Keaton if like I was being really strict about this. Okay. And uh gonna lead actor now. Sean Penn. Do you want do you want, do you want to Karen go first just so we know oh, what your yeah. answer is gonna be? <laughs> no, it's sure. not actually. <laughs> Sean, oh, Penn, Mr. Griver, Sean Penn, Mr. Griver, Ben <laughs> Kingsley, House of Sand and Fog, Bill Murray, Lost Generation, Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean, Jude Law, Cold Mountain. Okay, I'm going to say this initially, but for the sake of the game, I'm going to play. This may be the perfect lineup, if I'm being totally honest. But it's close. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. But then I'm going to do something that's going to make everyone mad at me. So get ready. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I reach am across the screen. going to remove, for the sake of this game, Johnny Depp. Oh, no. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm thrilled no. you did that. I am going to remove Johnny Depp. And I'm going, no, 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 and I'm no. going to include Nicolas Cage for Matchstick Men. Oh, that's oh, a good one. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I think I I okay. believe with every bit of my soul that Nicolas Cage and Matrix Men is his last great performance. <laughs> One of. Meh. I do love that you also, when you remove Johnny Depp, you might have tipped the, uh, the, the race Bill, Bill Murray boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that worked Bill, out. Bill Murray's my four, though. I, he would have been next mm. to go. Bill another another performance that gets crapped on, Jude Law, Cold Mountain. I'm never here for that. I think he is no, so good. You're, you're, cool. you're about to be. Oh, yeah, there you go. Go ahead. I, go I, be- well, well, no, no. I'm I'm also removing Johnny Depp. I don't care for the Pirates Caribbean franchise. I never got the fuss. He's okay. Oh, the like, franchise I, is garbage. The first one's just good, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> didn't really like the first one. I he he didn't amuse me being drunk. It didn't do much for me. Um, but I'm going to go with Paul Schneider for all the real girls. That two hander is amazing. Also. Okay. Marcus, I'm just getting Mark to watch all the real girls. He's not going to watch it. No, I'm not going to watch it. I got too many things to watch right now. You yeah. would like it. It's, Dave, it's David Gordon Green's he's, best movie. He's he's not going to like it. I remember liking Jude Law, and I'm going to watch Cold Mountain here eventually. But uh, again, but I'm going to take him out because I think again that lineup's pretty strong, and he'd be my five. So I'd take him out, and I'd put in Paul Giamatti for American Splendor. Ah, good answer. Solid. That's Solid. a really good answer. He's great in that movie. So, Cage over over Giamatti, but yes. So I agree with Mark's logic. It's not that Jude Law is bad. He's just my number five in that lineup. Yeah. I'm replacing him with Killian Murphy for 28 Days Later. Whoa. Oh, I like it. Look at you. Like Tom Cruise just turned off the podcast. <laughs> He's like, I hey. lost Peterson. I mean, it's over. Like, she, Listen, Karen's a lot of the things. Thing is, I know, she, I know. She, he can, she should have six Oscar nominations, but that's she, not one of them. She can't, she can't with a straight face. <laughs> say that he deserved to be there for Last Samurai. No. And I enjoy that movie, and I enjoy him in that movie, but that's not one of the ones that he should have been nominated for. Wait, wait, what are his six? Um, I gotta pull up yeah, the you list. Made, you made a bold claim, come on. No, I, I've thought about this a lot, I do. I'm sure um, you have every night before bed. <laughs> oh, it, 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 on my, because I keep a running tally, I believe he should have four. In his career, I think he should have six nominations. I think he should have at least two or three wins. Oh no, I he only has one Oscar. In the, actually, no, he might have two. In the yeah, no, I think he should have two Oscars. Uh, Jerry Maguire and Magnolia. No, Magnolia and Born on the Fourth of July. I could be. I'd be yeah, fine. With he that should also. have that one as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So I think he should have been nominated for Rain Man. Rain Man, lead. Um. Yeah. Okay. Just Would you sure. have accepted a supporting category for a nomination? What's that? <laughs> Would you have accepted a supporting nomination as a category? No, because she's nomination? not a monster. She might. It have would be anyway. category fraud. Yes. Um, I would have accepted supporting actor nomination for Collateral, where he should have been nominated. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. And also the Come other on. one. You're missing the one I have here. Come on, it's this is a no brainer. Come on, you know it, Karen. You know it. You know it. It's like are you it, thinking it, 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 No. Oh. <laughs> no. Stop. Listen, it's, it's like it's, it's like his definitive if, line that everyone knows as a Tom Cruise line. A few good men. Come on. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He totally Sorry, should have yes. that one. 
I actually, I'm now, I'm looking because I was about to say, I would give him all the all the right moves. Also, I'd get him in there for that. <laughs> would you? I love that movie. So yes, I believe he should have been nominated for Rain Man, Born on the Fourth of July, A Few Good Men, Jerry Maguire, Magnolia, and Collateral. And Collateral. Yeah. Yep. Mm. What about Risky Business? No. I do love that movie, but no. Come on. I think he's better in all the right moves, but that, that year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could have got him in. Oh, man. We are we are terrible people sometimes. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Only us, not you, Mark. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm abstaining from Ding the conversation. Ding so. What was that? Are you, are you watching He's abstaining porn? from the conversation and doing are something else. Are you watching <laughs> porn, Mark Johnson? No. No. Oh, Is yes. this I your watched, Me Too I, movement right now? With, with all my with all my children, right Jesus. In the next Listen. Um, oh, this is was, this is the only reason he does the podcast. Twitter the only time you can get an hour locked with the door locked. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I wanted to ask you guys something. Also, so they um, it just brought an idea to me. Uh, I had this written down here. Um, so uh, I've said many times on podcasts and get made fun of for it, obviously, and it's okay to make fun of me for it about me having belief that Liv Tyler should have got an Oscar nomination for Armageddon. And what, okay what, what triggered that. this in my head right now was Karen saying Killian Murphy for 28 Days Later. So I wanted to discuss, are there, like, in your personal lineup, some really unconventional stuff that's in there that, like, you put in there that you think people are, like, you're stupid or that, you know, not that you're embarrassed because you shouldn't be embarrassed of your movie picks. But you're just like, these are not conventional. No one does this. This is, like throwaway votes obviously if i was in the oscar academy that that year oh yeah and do you have some of those because i i have a couple but i wanted to like you know i don't want to be the only one that names them so i wanted you guys to kind of gear up for a little bit of them um and then are you I, gonna give a year or do you just mean no i mean well? like well i mean let's keep it 90s on because i think like okay. we, we don't want to go too far back obviously and, are you, and do you thinking like could they be super indie, never caught on, or do you want like mainstream, like comedy, rom com type thing? Okay, so here, here's something like I have. See, this isn't really a good. Ex- this one isn't a good example. I was gonna say like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day, like that is that's actually kind that's of. It's not really that. It's awkward. not. It's not. Yeah. It's not really. Yeah. By the way, I think that's his maybe his best performance. I just that's a weird thing to say, like in some circles um so because yeah i think it just depends on on the audience you're talking about because like yeah, for well, example I, yeah so okay yeah. Good. i was just gonna say it's like to us someone says john cusack grace is gone we go yeah i remember that had buzz and it didn't work out it wasn't really up to snuff but to the universe they're like wait what is that that's throwing away your vote you know yeah so an example i have here is uh, oh, Claire Danes, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Like, I totally believe that mm. that, that whole movie, okay. front to back, is uh, incredible. And I would put it in a bunch of stuff. Another thing I have is, like, Charlize Theron and the Devil's Advocate. Like, I think she's really, really great in that movie. And also that movie is, like, Al Pacino turned up to 56. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. but but it's I I still think the movie's good, and I still think I think she's a great part of it. Alicia Silverstone for Clueless. That is one see, for me. that that's a good one. I actually will stand by something that totally doesn't work well today, but it's on TV every day, and I still will watch a little bit of it. Kevin Klein and In and Out. Yeah. Ooh, it's a good one. It's a great. It, like okay, like it's a great. If you movie. accept that the premise doesn't work now, it's a yes, great movie. like it it does not get me today at all. <laughs> if you accept it that it's a not, very nineties premise, it, it is not even very nineties. I think it was almost even too dated for the nineties. I'm surprised it skated. Out of it was bed. only because uh, it was it caught right at the moment where Tom Hanks gave his speech, and that was like a, a news story for thirty seconds. Y- yeah, and somebody I, banged I, out a script that sure. day. Sure, yeah, I think that a lot of it was part. I think yes. I think Tom Hanks 
was the only like rubber stamp of <laughs> approval for that movie. Um, yeah. and, and also, I think it was like the world said to themselves, like, we can't get mad at Frank Oz. Like, we can't. <laughs> so let's just. Well, like, the movie we'll is just... also just like so warm hearted. Like, it has uh, no anger in its body. It's just like, misguided it, yeah. in its concept. Yeah. Um, another one I have here is two nominations from the same movie. Dennis France and Meg Ryan in City of Angels, because I think that movie's I actually really good. I'll go three and go Nick Cage. I'll co sign that. I think that movie's really, really good. I actually hate that, that movie. I, you, you said you hate it? Yes. Uh, it is my runner up in adapted screenplay that year to The Prince of Egypt. Oh my God. That movie makes me so angry. The Prince of Egypt or City of Angels? No, City of Angels. <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. Prince of Egypt is good. Prince of Egypt is amazing. <laughs> um, what, do, what do you get mad about City of Angels? Um, it's terrible. I mean, yeah. It's, like, is it, is, it, is it the whole thing that it's cheesy as hell? I mean, it is, che- it is total cheese. It is I mean, like, do you guys like Wings of Desire better, or is, is that part of it? I just don't like I mean, Nicholas listen, Cage. I, I'd also argue it's the best movie soundtrack in the 90s. Oh, it's, oh, it's a, a great soundtrack. Oh, my soundtrack. God. Yeah. That's, yeah. All, that's all that came is, out of that one. Oh, my God. The, uh, that just made me think, oh, God, my Atlantis Morissette concert's totally going to get canceled. Oh. My uh, yes, Je- Je- Jessica got me uh, oh. Lance Morrison tickets for my birthday. Uh, well, she got it for me for Christmas. The concert's on my birthday, which is July first. It'll get rescheduled. Though, I know and those tickets it, will probably. Still do you want to hear the most dated thing about the concert, though, uh, Karen? You'll appreciate this, Mark. You'll die. Um, so Lance Morrison is the concert, and do you know who's opening? Garbage. Oh my yeah. god! Yes, that's a good act. I know, yeah. Yeah, and like fun. I didn't even know they were still like alive. <laughs> Are they going to do the box song? <laughs> uh, see that. See that's that's why I didn't say it to you, Joey. I knew you were yeah. going to that, and that is not garbage that, was- that I know. I know garbage, garbage, garbage. Before James Bond, <laughs> there's a oh, garbage before them too. I'm there's a gar- there's a garbage that exists answer. in American history, and that garbage is the one who shows up huh. to that concert. Um. Anyone else got anything else? Any, uh, or anything? Period. No. Uh, I, I nothing springs the mind immediately, but like last year, I would have happily gotten Charlie's there run in for long shot, and that's yeah closer to what yeah. we're talking about. Um, another one I have here, Lee Evans. There's something about Mary, and I mean every sentence of that, huh. every bit of the words. Yeah. Lee Evans is the one who plays the guy on crutches, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Do you like there's something about Mary, or are you a monster? I'm a monster. Do you do you really not like it? It's okay. It's fine. It's entertaining. It, it was worth seeing, and I'll never see it again. Yeah. By the way, it, there's, I, there's no it is it is a very good movie, but I will also share that it was the most overblown movie of the time. Because I remember when the first reviews dropped, MT, MTV did a review. I think it was Kurt Loder, who's in New York Film Critics Online with me, and I see every year. And I always kind of want to approach him about this and blame him. But I think it was his review or someone around him that said it's the funniest movie that's ever been made. Well, they're Like, ridiculous. really, really blew it up. Um, okay, then. You said Mark Cuban? I mean- I said, okay, then. <laughs> you said Mark Cuban. Yeah, I, like, I thought I heard just, Cuban. I mean, yeah, that's my new name? swear word. Oh, Mark yeah. Cuban. <laughs> Mark Cuban. I mean, there is something to be said for, like, if you go to a, a comedy and the entire audience is laughing, like rapturous laughter, you can get caught up on it. Because I remember the seeing Knocked Up, and I'd never heard an audience laugh like that. Mm. And I was like, I don't think I've seen like the funniest movie ever made. I think I saw a really great movie I loved, but like, did I like, did I just see like a classic comedy being made? But you saw people like really get into it. That's, that's yeah, like the, yeah, like you like to the point where you're like, I have to see this again. I'm missing lines. People are still laughing at the last line. So I mean, there's a possibility that like even at a press screening for like, there's yeah. something about Mary. It could have been like that. Uh, Karen, can I ask for your cosign on this? Because I feel like you're the only one that's gonna possibly agree with me okay i'll try 1999 uh-huh good year of cinema yes and i believe and I, and I believe that best actress lineup should have included a miss sarah michelle geller for cruel intentions get out of here I, you can follow us at uh she, she <laughs> is a despicable character that you hate and she does it so well she and, does the role well. And does it? She've been nominated. And yeah. does it super sexy? And listen, oh, well, this I, is listen. This, this is, is just listen. How old were you in 1999? 
Uh, fifteen. That's exactly mm-hmm. why yeah. I'm that is a fifteen but it's year also, old. But it's also it's also a good movie. I also think is Denise Richards should have been nominated for Wild well, Things. Yes, of you course might you be do. correct. She was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, guys. I got to get HR on the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is this has been Clayton and Mark's Dirty Dreams. You can follow us over. Um, I'd also... I, I mean, I, has there ever been a breakthrough performance like Denise no, Richards? No, no. I'm, t- I'm telling you, no. She's <laughs> Mark, fantastic. What, what you broke through is your own business. I'd, yeah. I'd also <laughs> um, go to 2000. and inc- This isn't unconventional because I think people will agree with me here like on a, on a mass scale. So not Lathan and Love and Basketball is a fantastic performance. Yeah. And Pretty she good. should she should have got love for that. Uh I'm going instead to, she got basketball. <laughs> she got basketball. Uh this this isn't an answer, but I just want to know real quick. Do you guys love Tony Shalhoub and the man who wasn't there? No. Eh. Well. I don't love that movie. Really? Oh, you don't like Cohen's no. really. It's not like bottom tier Cohen, but it's 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 meh. I would say it's the most and I say this not saying it's a bad movie, but I think it's the most forgettable Cohen. It's of, forgettable for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's a forgettable one. Yeah. How about uh, Ghost World for Birch? She's good. Don't like the movie at all. Yeah, no. Karen, did you have something on the tip of your tongue? I did, and I don't remember what it is now. I'm trying to scroll back through and yeah. see if I can remember. Uh, um, good. I mean, I would love to have seen Catherine O'Hara for Best in Show. Mm-hmm. Good. I like Nia Vardalis in My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Oh, yeah. I think she's mm-hmm. great. Oh, you know what's one that would have gotten one vote being me? Adam Sandler, Rain Over Me. Yeah. Like, There's some like that. It's, it's, yes, it's actually, that would have been one vote from Joey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not a bad performance. It's just, no, uh, it's you know, it's just in a, like a very forgettable movie. I like that movie still. Um, I talk at length about Mark Wahl- Wahlberg and I Heard Huckabees. I don't need to say that again. <laughs> um Vince also, that's that's not quite the it's i feel like that's a different type of movie though yeah. that's like a movie by someone who was on an awards track like it's not quite the same as like mark Wahlberg in the happening like please don't yeah. say that yeah. but you know yeah vince vaughn and wedding crashers i i believe in so much he should have been there yeah that, no you know what yeah i would agree with that one yeah he's so funny in that movie I don't think he's he ever. Really he's, I don't think. He, yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of another great Vince Vaughn performance. Like, and I'm not really, it's not coming to mind. Into the bad. Wild. He's very good in Into the Wild. I don't even remember him in Into the Wild. That's. I don't even remember he was in that. So he's. Such he's a, the. He I know. Hires, I know who he, first, yes, yeah. who he is. But I just. I didn't remember until you. I was like, he was in Into the Wild. Yeah. yeah, he was. And Zach Galifianakis. Same scene. Well, same like segment. Come on, Mark. You got to ask something. Something. Shia LaBeouf, a guy to recognize uh, in your saints? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no. No, I don't. No I Harry have, Potter I'd have people? To, I'd have to think about this one. This is too Would deep. you nominate a Harry Potter well, person? Well, you've had time to think about it. Yeah. Well, hey, Mark, how about Super Bowl? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. no, not not really. Brad you were Pitt. You this praise. Brad Pitt, like Burn After ago. Reading? Come on. Yeah, I got, I got nothing. I'd have, to, I'd have to think on that one a little longer. Yeah, I cannot remember the other one that I had that I was just like, oh, yeah, that one, but. It's gone now. Paul, Paul Rudd, clueless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark, is, highly, is Haley Steinfeld lead or supporting in True Grit? She's lead. Good man. Oh, you know what's? You know what? Oh, it's not sure. one because it's it's a movie that sh- isn't an Oscar movie, but it's a performance that more people will agree with me. Not more than not, but like I wouldn't be the only one. Eugene Levy, American Pie. Ah, you know what? That's a great answer. Yeah, if there was ever one yeah. of those, like the movie doesn't yeah. deserve to be nominated for anything. But God, he's, is he funny? He's, Jim, he's Jim's dad, and that's all. I'll never know what his real character's name was, and I probably will never not, care. He doesn't. He, they have never given him a name. Oh, he's Jim's have, have dad. They, is it true? Is that true? They I think he's Jim's dad. Yeah, he's oh, just right. he Jim's oh, dad. Good, amazing. I mean, so he has like, a last name because I think Jim has a last name. Yeah, but yeah, amazing. Um, here you go, Mark. So, because this, this is the year. I'm about, oh, I gave you Haley Steinfeld. There's a lot of category confusion ish, so I wanted to see where you stood. So you said Haley Steinfeld's lead, right? She definitely is lead. Okay. Uh-huh. Leslie Manville in another year, lead or supporting? Oh God, she was the best part of that. I yeah. don't remember if it was lead or supporting though. She got campaign lead. She's totally supporting. Yeah, though. it probably was supporting then. If yeah, uh, Annette Benning, kids are all right. Lead or supporting? 
I think that's an, I think I think it's an I, I think it's, it's like I, think, a I think it's a debate you can have. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm that, totally yeah. satisfied either way. Yeah, I agree. What'd you say? Cameron? I agree. Like I'm I'm fine with her being in either yeah. lead or well, supporting. So so then would do her and Julianne Moore need to be together wherever they yes. go in life or in the movie? <laughs> in life, yes, in life, <laughs> both, yes. Yeah. Like Julianne um, Moore, I, I feel like it's a very very lead. Benning, I Julian feel like Moore it's a is more lead. I could separate them if uh, if Benning wants wants yeah. supporting without a problem. But well, then is Mark Ruffalo supporting? Yes, mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's the couple story more so than his. He's it's, important yeah. to the story. He's, That's the thing. I feel yeah. like either Moore and Benning are co leads, or everybody's supporting. Could get on board with that also. Yeah, it's. So with an ensemble, could everybody go lead and, or everybody go supporting as long as they go the I same? Mean, you can do whatever you want. Well, I mean, I, I, so I, I, like, yes, everyone can go supporting, obviously. In the lead argument, I just feel, again, just following Clayton logic that I think there can definitely always be more than two leads. Um, yeah. Can there like, would you so friends in the sixth season all campaign lead for Emmys, can you have, can they all be leads? Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I, I believe in something like that where it's about these, again, the Clayton logic, it's about six friends. Yes, yeah. they're all lead that. I do also understand the argument against it, not going after the merits of it, but on the, like, can you convince people to just pick yeah. one thing as the, yeah. it's yeah. just a well, much harder yeah. argument. We're, yeah, we're not, we're trying, I'm getting away from like yeah. the whole like strategy so listen, part of it. Yeah. Do you, do you know how many times true has had to li- listen to me yell at my wife and kids in this podcast? Like 75 times. The what? <laughs> Drew, he Drew keeps has muting himself to us, right. oh, yeah. but to it's on his I mean, that's why you're muted. So it's fine. So yeah. he, oh, yeah, that's why he's not good. Yeah. Poor Drew. Poor yeah. Drew. I mean, I mean, Drew's also going to hear me talk to no one for a long time while you guys are talking, <laughs> yeah. and that's fine, too. For everyone who doesn't know, Drew's our producer. Hello. Say hi to Drew. Hi, hi Drew. Drew Griffith. You're hey, Drew. You're the best. We love you. You are in. You live in Austin, and it's great. <laughs> um, all right. Here are two more for you. Aaron Eckhart in Rabbit Hole. Mm. No. Mm. He's supporting. a lead in that. Is he? I'm okay yeah. with supporting. It w- I, I feel like he and really him in are both leads in that movie. Okay, and Miles Teller is supporting. Them. Miles, Miles is Teller definitely supporting. supporting. Yeah, Miles okay. Teller is supporting. Okay. Uh, Andrew Garfield in The Social Network? Supporting. God. Definitely? Supporting. Yeah, definitely supporting. Not definitely. Not definitely. Not definitely. I mean, I there's a good part of the movie. I could see a case for co-lead. You can, hear, you can hear the case? Yeah. The movie never the, really the, goes to him without Zuckerberg. Yes, it does. Several not times. For, not for long periods, does it? Not that I remember. Yeah, the second the second half of the movie is they're mostly separate because yeah. um, Zuckerberg is with uh, Sean Parker. I know, but that's when you I'll don't see them. much of you don't see much. No, of you them. see Andrew Garfield in New York hustling around, and he freezes the credit cards. And, yeah, when he uh, gets he's cut on, off. I mean, that's that's yeah, for yeah, like and the seconds. girlfriend who sets fire to the tie. Yeah, but yeah. he's on. No, when he does when she does the fire, he's on the phone with Mark, and they're kind of cutting back and forth. And again, while they're talking about when he's in New York, it's cutting back and forth to the um, the the law the law the trial or whatever. Yes, because they're the, the, the deposition. So you never you never really have long stretches without him. I always forget, by the way, Rashida Jones is in that movie. I don't know. I, yeah. I'd say support. I think Zuckerberg. I just try to forget lead. that movie. Oh, no. uh, yeah, Karen. All right, here here's Karen. one for you, Mark. I think you. I would love to hear your thoughts. Go. Br- Brad Pitt, The Tree of Life. He is. And wait, before you give your answer, then I want you to also give yeah. me the answer of what Hunter McCracken is. Now go. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that's an ensemble just like spotlight kind of level uh, okay. film. So I don't I would probably say they're all supporting. All right. I don't know that you have a lead. If you did, yeah. if you made me pick between the two, I'd probably say Hunter's. The Not lead. making you. You're doing the right thing because you're a human. OK, <laughs> so go ahead. Now, no, what, now what are you doing? They're all supporting. Do you think they're all supporting? Yeah. Do you, do you guys I, agree? I totally agree, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the way that movie works, yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how different I am. Though. 
<laughs> yes, the way that movie is the way that is movie is constructed and written. Yes, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is, there that really is. isn't a lead in that movie. <laughs> All right, uh, Michael Pena in End of Watch. It's co-lead. co-lead. Yeah. And you're right. Um, that's a good yeah, movie. The only and, time yet, and yet I nominate yeah. him in supporting. But yeah. Oh, no. I am yeah, I totally I will take it because he's fantastic. But they're, those two are really tied together in that movie. Philip Seymour Hoffman in The Master? Supporting. Uh, supporting. Yeah. They're cool. There's a lot of time. Lead, but There's I a lot of time supporting. without him. Yeah, I think they're totally cool. Okay. Um, Naomi Watts in The Impossible. Lead. Lead. She's the main character of that. Is she? Yeah. Yeah, I just I watched it so. again. A I feel like Tom here. Holland is. Yeah, right. I, 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 I feel like he is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we spent yeah, they, they all, But then it splits. Those are two codes. But then it's then it becomes then do you have the whole Ewan McGregor arc, right? Cuz then what's Ewan McGregor? I don't know. I think we follow her from the moment it it, it impacts. She's the first one that comes back. We follow her trying to collect people. I, I don't know. I think it's her movie more than anybody's. Hmm. Okay, that's just her, my her movie. Tom Holland co lead. Yeah, but yeah. I'd put if you're going to talk about a category, she goes in. I, I would have to say lead. I couldn't put her yes. supporting. Okay, and she's okay. great. She's great in it. It might be my favorite performance of hers. That or Twenty One Grams, which some idiots on the show didn't like. I don't like that movie at all. <laughs> I just don't like the movie. I think <laughs> she's good in it. Wait, my, yeah. I'm not an idiot. I like. I love it. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. Don't don't like, don't, don't to try that. to suck up to Johnson. Yeah. So I'm saying, I love Twenty One Grams. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Meryl Streep in August Osage County. Boring. Supporting. Yeah, it's ensemble. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I would consider anybody a. I, I, I think there's. Though. I think Julie Roberts is a total Julia lead. Julie is a lead. I think she's a total yeah. lead. Yeah. Uh, Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. Supporting. Boring. Supporting. Mm, I agree. Joey, do you agree? Yeah, supporting. It's Anne Hathaway's movie. Emily Blunt also supporting and Emily him. Blunt. Yeah, yes. that's that's the tougher one, probably. I guess supporting. No, she's still yeah, she, supporting. She, she, she definitely. She's just a bigger supporting character than Meryl Streep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've been through this again over and over. But Steve Carell and Foxcatcher. Supporting. 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 See, oh, you guys came to the Clayton side. I mean, like I, I <laughs> if if everyone else said lead, I wouldn't argue hard with them. But mm. yeah, like. Go one place, yeah. Jason Siegel and the end of the tour. Supporting. I guess supporting. It's been a while since I've seen that. I don't remember that movie. <laughs> I wanted to support the movie and yeah. the performance, so I would have gone wherever they went. But it's about Jesse Eisenberg's conversation with David Foster Wallace. It has. It begins and ends without him, which is not always reasoning enough, but... I think it's. I think it's co lead. I'm I'm fine with co lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's two hander, so that's fine. That's what she said. Yeah. Is there a lead in Spotlight? No. No. No, but if there is, it's Keaton. Yeah. But you wouldn't. Well, but you wouldn't do but it. I, but I'd have a hard time with that. I'd yeah. almost yeah. say Ruffalo if there was a lead, but no, they I don't. There isn't a clear cut lead. Mm-hmm. I actually, yeah, I I was about to say that too, Joey. I think if there, if you're going to say there's a lead, I feel like it's Ruffalo, but I don't think there is one. Yeah, I think we we think Ruffalo just because there's the emotion is coming from his end. Yeah. Like you have the empathy from from Rachel McAdams, and you have the emotion and the anger from Ruffalo, and Keaton's kind of just like wrangling the team. And then he has to. He has his friend who has the lawyer. Like with he's the, the leader, but he's yeah. not the lead of the movie. Exactly. Yeah, I I will say a lot of times we do, um, what's it called? I think the position in which the character holds sometimes influences our yes weight because like he's the boss, so yeah. he's the lead. But but in that movie, you could also make that's, the argument. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like he's yeah. the leader of that group, so, so it's think, easy yeah. to look at it and go, "Oh, well, he would be the lead." But really, I don't think he would yeah. be. Yeah, but every member of that team has information that they need to get that otherwise the story doesn't work. So they they then sort of become the ensemble, which yeah. I think lends more to everyone supporting. I'd be curious what their airtime is because he does a lot on his own with like the the visits with the bishop, and he goes with Rachel McAdams to see. 
uh, uh, Billy Crudup. Lawyer, yeah, Billy Crudup. Like the, he's, and then he goes to that one dude's house at the end. And yeah. gets the information. Yeah. Like, he, he's he, he has a, a, he's a, a he has a he's that. a heavy plot device, but not necessarily the lead. But yes, I, again, I'd say ensemble. I, I don't think anybody's a lead. Yeah, because there's a bunch of scenes of Ruffalo on the phone with uh, Richard yeah. Jenkins, and then yeah. he has scenes with um, John Slattery. Yeah, when he brings over the the food, the pizza, and with you know, Leah Schreiber. All right, last last one in the vein of what we were talking about: the Hateful Eight. Is there a lead? No, but if there was Sam, yeah, maybe Sam. But no, they're all together almost the whole time, I guess. Right for the most part, until they yeah. die. Sam <laughs> was campaign lead. Yeah, I think that's fine. But I don't. But I, I don't think, think there's a lead. I think that was more Sam wanting to go lead than the story. No, I think they were just trying to, to get lead. someone in somewhere. Yeah. Um, which they could have in Mr. Walton Goggins, because I think he's great in that. Um, okay, so this week, uh, you're going to hopefully enjoy the site and all its uh, you know, changes. There's going to be like some questions. Update up. your profile. Update your Take profile. Very exciting. Oh, add a friend, because you can add friends, and oh you can then direct message them. And you, you can get create- a point. You, you get create a point groups. for changing your picture too. I found you that get, out. you do you get many points for <laughs> many different things. Yeah, and then there's a leaderboard. Like right now, Mark, you're second on the leaderboard. Because I'm on the site. It's I know, I'm but, on the site but, all know, the time. No, because you yeah. just went on right now. But actually, I'm going to I'm going to uh, take it so we can't so we can't rank. Oh, man. oh yeah, that's good. yeah, that's because yeah, be terrible. You. Otherwise, could you just set like, up a separate? thing so we could see which of our oh, yeah, contributors for the sta- which, are which, actually <laughs> looking at which, which, are, yes. which are the staffers? I'm going to have no, a staff have leader board. We're going to see who's day. pieces of garbage. <laughs> and who is it? Mark is going to be in uh, last place every time. Every. Actually, yeah, I think Mark and I would both be tied because I don't look at the front end of the site because I, I right? read everybody's articles, oh. but it's behind the scenes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, I have to go. All right, so Mark, tell me you can follow you. <laughs> at Mark Likes Movies. And we're going to follow you, Karen. I am at Karen M. Peterson. We're going to follow you, Joey. At Joey Magazine. And you can follow me at Award Ticker, download Stitcher Radio, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff. Go to awardsticker.com for all your news. No more hub.awardsticker.com. Just go to the site. That's it. I'm Clayton with everyone. See you at the movies. We love you. Stay safe. Take care. Happy social distancing. Bye. Bye. Circuit Breaker is brought to you by AwardCircuit.com. Just plug in. Then you can request it. Shut up! Um, And that's going to tie to a bigger thing that's coming down the line. Uh, But we want to get you guys in the mood of rating stuff. And we don't just have, um, you know, the most recent things. We try to, you know, I'm I'm trying to diversify. Sorry about that, Drew. Give everyone opportunity to rate and see stuff.